going to cool down. Um, what about our assumptions? When does this work? Well, uh, we need to think about that because our assumption was the temperature of the sphere is going to be the same for the whole time. Is that the case uh, in a given situation? So we're going to do a little example here. If we consider this wall here, it's got a constant temperature TS1 over here, uh, and it's got a convective boundary over here. And we're interested kind of in what the surface temperature you know, uh, is at that, at that internal wall. So this is going to be different depending upon how, uh, how much convection we have. At that surface, we can write that, okay, we make a little control surface. Whatever heat energy is moving into that surface by conduction is also leaving it by convection. Uh, and then we can rewrite that by putting in our rate equations. Here's our conductive rate equation and our convective rate equation. A divides out, the area divides out on both sides, and we get this equation here. And notice these t's are different over here. This is surface one and surface two. This is surface two and the environmental temperature. But what we're going to do is take these guys uh, and divide them out. So we're kind of interested in how much temperature difference is there between here and here and between here and here. And so we rearrange that the difference between the internal wall over the temperature difference between the external wall. Now remember, in lumped capacitance, we're assuming the internal temperature difference is going to be small, right? So we want this value here to be small if lumped capacitance is going to work. And it's equal to HL over K. That guy, that HL over K, is a dimensionless number, and you can check that if you do your units with H and K and L, uh, called the B up number. Uh, and its physical meaning is basically how uh, effective is the convection here. In other words, are we removing energy from that surface quickly? Uh, and how effective is the conduction? In other words, how, how effective are we moving energy from that one inside wall to the outside wall. Again, what do we want this to be for lumped capacitance for our assumptions to be true? We want this to be small, the temperature differences inside the solid material to be small. So we want this whole value to be small, right? So we want a lot better conduction than we have want convection, right? We want things if, this, if the B-up number is small, that means things are, heat is being conducted very effectively inside our sphere, keeping that temperature uh, at equilibrium, even as convection is trying to remove some of that heat from the surface, from one part of it. And so in this case, we want uh, conduction to be fast, uh, and so we want a low uh, B-up number, okay? And in fact, the assumptions, the lump capacity equations that we came up with are generally correct. The error is relatively insignificant if the Biot number is under 0.1. And here you can see some images of uh, the temperature plots. And this is for the wall example rather than a sphere, but they look very similar for a sphere. You wouldn't see a straight line here. Um, but if we have a low Biot number, then this guy, the surface temperature difference between here and here is very small uh, and this one is large and so as b at number is uh, small if our b at number is large then we're removing a bunch of energy from our surface quickly uh, and it's not being replenished from the inside of the wall uh, because the conductive effectiveness is not very high okay so that becomes our b at number becomes our check to see if, in a given situation, if it makes sense to use the lump capacitance model. If it doesn't, we got to solve this in a much more complicated 2D transient way.